Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week, we're going to continue our search for different types of software that might replace some of the services that will be deprecated in macOS Server. And so again, for those of you that may not know, uh, macOS Server will be deprecated in the spring, uh, somewhere probably around June of 2018. And so that means that a number of services will be going away. And so what I wanted to do is to put some screencasts together to give you some alternatives so that you could still run your own home server uh, just now outside of what we normally would do inside a macOS server. Now, a few of the services that are going away are things like calendars and contacts that we had in server. Uh, those things will be uh, deprecated here in the spring. And so I wanted to give you some uh, options to replace those things in case you wanted to run your own iCloud type service. Now, one of the things that uh, we're going to look at today is running an application that is called OwnCloud. Now, OwnCloud is uh, basically, as it states, it sets up your own cloud in the sense that it allows you to sync things like contacts, calendars, uh, photos, files. It almost works like Dropbox in many ways uh, across your various devices. Now, one of the things that's important to understand is that OwnCloud does not have uh, a server instance for Mac. So running a server uh, for own cloud on your Mac as is is not going to work. Uh, but what I'm going to do is show you a way to work around that so that you can run own cloud on your Mac mini since you already have your Mac mini established as a server. I want to show you how that works. So in order to do that what we're going to have to do is install an application called Docker. And so let me just show you that for a minute here. Actually, let's go to this screen. So Docker is uh, an application that runs a virtualized uh, mini Linux uh, virtual machine that includes various containers that you can add within that machine so you can run different instances of software. Uh, one of the great things about this application, if I just go over here to the Docker store, is that there are a number of different applications that you can run inside uh, your Docker instance because, again, it is running a, mi a mini uh, Linux solution. And so you could go through and see all the various containers that they have available. Well, OwnCloud is one of those things that you can run inside a Docker instance. So we're gonna, I'm going to show you how that works so you can get that set up and ready to go. So if you come over to um, the docs.docker.com right here, and you're going for Docker for Mac, uh, is what you want to find right here is where it says Mac. Uh, you can see we've got a stable channel and an edge channel that we can install from. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get the uh, stable channel for Mac to install it. Now right on the page it does give you uh, some instances and some things to know. Uh, again, in order to run this, you've got to be running El Capitan or newer, and you need a Mac Mini that's uh, 2010 or newer. So if you're using an older uh, Mac Mini, uh, you're going to have problems with that. And so at that point, you may want to consider other options like maybe um, a, a NAS, like a Synology or something like that that you can run this on. Uh, but just wanted to uh, let you know that those are some of the system requirements that, uh, that are needed. And you can kind of go through here and see if your machine is up to specs as well as the software that you've got. So I've already downloaded this, so I'm just going to come up here uh, to my download area here, and we're just going to double-click on the Docker image. And let me just go ahead and put this down right here so we can just run this. And so you can see that it has now set this up, and so here's our Docker application. We're just going to drag this over into our Applications folder. And it's going to add it to that. And once it's done, I'll show you how to run it for the first time. OK, now that the file's been downloaded and I've added it to my Applications folder right here, let's go ahead and run Docker for the first time. So I just double click on it to run the application. And it's going to launch it for me. And once it does that, it's just going to verify it. And this is a menu bar application. Uh, we're going to go ahead and open. So it will be running up in the menu bar. See, it says, welcome. Uh, we're happy to have you. You say next. And it just says it needs privileged access. So it's going to be asked for your password because it's going to be installing some networking components. So we're going to say, OK. And so here's where you put in your username and password. So let me go ahead and put that information in here. And once you've done that, you just click on OK. And it's going to go ahead and add it. And so as you can see here, let me just go ahead and put this down. Docker now is starting up and it's running in the menu bar. So it gives me a little whale icon up here. 
And you can see it's starting to hang in there for a moment. So we're just going to go ahead and wait uh, to get it started and get it up and running. So uh, once it's done, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so now you can see that it is up and running. Uh, you might want to come down here. We can create a sign-in or a Docker ID. If you don't have a Docker ID, you can just click on cloud.docker.com and it's going to come in and take you to the website here where you can create your own uh, Docker ID. Uh, you can put in your email address, choose a password, and sign up right from here. So I'm going to go ahead and create that and sign in, and then I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. Okay, so now that I've got that information in there, let me just click on Login. And now it's going to log me in with my Docker ID. So if I come back up here, you can see that Docker is running. You can see it has me uh, signed in right here, and I've got all of my information there. Uh, if you wanted to, you can always check for updates here, or if you pull up Preferences, uh, you have the option to make sure that it says Start Docker when you log in, so that way your own cloud instance will always be running. Uh, you can check for updates. You could also include this virtual machine in your Time Machine backups if you're doing that. So if you want to back this up, you'll want to check that box right there to make up, uh, you know, how to have it being backed up by Time Machine. Now it's going to increase the Time Machine backups, obviously, because you're going to be putting information in there. I'm just going to cancel for my purposes, but just wanted to show you that's there. And then you can store the Docker logins in your Mac OS keychain if you want to do that, which makes it just a little bit more convenient. If you don't want to send statistics, you can uncheck that. Uh, and then there's a, a number of other options up here that we'll cover at another time. Uh, but if I come in here too, you've got the uh, the daemon running in the background, and you can see it's on experimental, and uh, there's other things we can do there. If at any time you have some issues, you can come in here to reset, and you can remove all the data and start over, or you can reset it to uh, factory defaults, or you can uninstall from right here, just in case you're looking for that. So let me just go ahead and uh, close this for a minute. Okay, now that we've got Docker all set up and ready to go, now what we're going to do is create uh, two mini machines in essence. We're going to create uh, a container for own cloud and we're going to create a container for a uh, database called Maria uh, database. Uh, you could also use uh, other database options uh, without that, that uh, name, such as uh, MySQL or whatever. Uh, but in this case, that's what we're going to set up. So what we're going to do so first thing we're going to type is uh, cd and then enter and then we're going to make a directory and so i'm going to show you how to do this uh, own cloud with the underscore and then docker and you can see the file already exists for me because i've already put it in there now what we're going to do is do cd again and we're going to say own cloud with the underscore now we get that right own cloud underscore uh, docker just like that I'm going to hit enter, and you can see it puts us into that place. And then here we're going to create touch docker dash this time compose dot yml, just like that, so that we've got that set and ready to go. We're going to hit return. And then we're going to say open docker um, compose because we're going to want to open that file now. What it's going to do is open it in your favorite uh, text editor, whatever that is. In my case, I'm using Atom. And so I get this uh, blank document right here, all set and ready to go. Now, what I need to do is just paste some text in there. And so I'll just paste this in for you. And uh, there's a website that you can get this from, and I'll, I'll show you that, and I'll put it in the notes. So I'll just paste this text in. And so this is the text that I need here in this file. You'll see here that I've got an own cloud instance here, and then I've got the uh, database instant right, instance right here, the Maria database. So a couple things that I can do. First, I can change the port here. If I don't want it on 8080, maybe I've got something else going on. I could change it to something else, like let's say 8434, something like that. Uh, down here, you want to make sure where it says example that you're putting in a password there so that you change this to a password because you'll be logging in as root. So we want to change the password to something that only you know. So let me go ahead and put that in here. Okay, now once we have all of that in here, then we just want to save the file. So we're going to say save. And so now it's saved that instance and everything's set and ready to go. So now that, uh, now that that's done, what we want to do is go back into Terminal and we're going to launch OwnCloud for the first time. Okay, so here we are back in the terminal. And so what we're going to do is download the required images to start the server. 
So what we're going to do is we just come in here and we're going to say Docker with our uh, uh, dash there. We're going to say Compose with a space. We're going to say Up and then Dash D. And let's just hit Enter here. And you'll see that now it's starting to pull own cloud. It's starting to set up all of the different files and it's downloading what we need to actually get the server up and ready to go. So I'm gonna let it go through its process of downloading everything and when it's complete, I'll show you what it looks like on the other side. Okay, so as you can see here, everything is set up and done. Own cloud's been created and so has the Maria database. That's been all set up and ready to go as well. So now what we need to do is just test it and uh, get it started. So we're gonna pull a Safari window. And what you're gonna do is in here, you're just gonna put localhost with the actual port that you had set up before. And so in my case, it was 8434. So if I just hit enter, you can see that now it's launched OwnCloud, and this is my own OwnCloud instance. So now, from this page, there's a few things that we actually uh, that we actually need to set up here. So right here, you can see at the top, we're going to have to put in our administrator name and password. So you can choose one uh, for whatever you want it to be, and you can put it in here. So I'm just going to put in, let's say, uh, let's go admin, and then I'm going to put in a password. And it'll tell you if it's a good password or a strong password or a so-so one. In my case, it says so-so, but that's okay. That's what I want for now. So now I got to click this little storage and database right here, and I get this drop down. Now I'm going to use leave the user data uh, folder alone right there. Uh, but if I come down here, what I'm going to do is instead of leaving it at the default, see right here it says Maria Database. I'm just going to click on that. And you notice that I get this drop down with all this information that I need to put in. So what I'm going to do is right here for database user, since I didn't change anything, I'm going to put root. For the password, I'm going to put that password that I put in on my YML file. So the same one you had from before. Okay, so I type all that in there. In terms of database name, you can just leave it as own cloud because we just left it uh, that way. So we'll keep own cloud by itself, just like that. And then down here, instead of local host, you can just put MySQL if you want to do that. So we've got that all set and ready to go. So now that that's done, all we need to do is click on uh, Finish Setup. And so we're going to say Not Now. And it's going to go through the setup process here and load OwnCloud for the first time. So it might take a, a few minutes So once you get started because it's got to load everything. Uh, because it's doing configuration in the background as it's loading the screen. But once it's finished, we should have our own instance of own cloud. Now, one of the things you need to remember is to open the port that you set up in that uh, YML file. So in my case, that 8434, I have to open that port on my router uh, to uh, my server, pointing to whatever server I'm using to host this in order for it to work. Otherwise, you won't get uh, this screen in the first place. So I'm going to go ahead and let that load and do all its configuring. And as soon as it's finished, we'll come back and take a look at what it looks like. Okay, the database has been configured. Everything's ready to go. Uh, I've already put in my login credentials here, but you would put in the login that you set up on the last screen. And we're just going to go ahead and hit enter. And I'm going to say not now. And we're going to let this load for the first time. And so here we are in our very own instance of own cloud. Now, the beauty of this, like I said, is it is your own uh, Dropbox type of database that you should be able to access remotely. You notice there's a desktop application as well as um, iOS applications as well that you can use. You can also access your files via WebDAV. You can connect uh, your contacts so they can have access to those files as well and connect your calendar. And I'm going to do some screencasts to cover this in depth, but I wanted to show you how to get this all set up and ready to go so that you've got your very own own cloud instance running on your Mac server. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.